Hey guys, Jacob with Jacob Comics. Happy new comic book day, 11-9-2022. I hope all you guys found all your books where you expected them, either mailed to you in your cubby on the comic book wall of your local comic book shop. I hope you guys found all the issue guys issues you guys were looking for like I did in the loud and mysterious black bag over here. Now, before we get dived into that, I do want to let you guys know about the 600 subscriber giveaway. And when we hit 600 subscribers, we'll be giving this book away. It's a Marvel number one. All you have to do is like the video, comment down below, and be subscribed to the channel. Then I'll give you a chance to win when we hit 600 subscribers. I'll raffle the book off based on comments on the road to 600. All right, guys, let's go ahead and get dived into what I what I picked up this week from the local comic shop. Um, I already, it was kind of a bigger stack this week. I want to say it was a pretty big haul. Um, so that was the bag that we came in with. Um, if you saw yesterday's review, we'll start with, uh, with some of the DC books. Uh, we did get Wildcats number one. Uh, the Wild... I guess it's not the Covert Action Team Squad anymore. Now it's a much a much more longer title, but <laughs> it's the Wildcats are back. We've got Grifter, and uh, they're joined by Fairchild now. It's actually a pretty good little start, you know. Um, I'm hoping, I'm hoping it, it, it seems kind of interesting, you know what I'm saying, and uh, it's always fun to have uh, some of Jim Lee's creation, his his characters that he made for Image way back in the 90s have kind of fully joined DC to the point of, of you know, they're trying they're trying out getting their own titles, so I, I'm trying to support it. Um, <laughs> all right, guys, next up for DC, we got uh, uh, quite a bit of DC this week, actually. We got uh, Batman Incorporated number two. Um, the first one was just fun, and so it's kind of like an Avengers, uh, bat, but with Batman-related characters that, uh, are hanging out in Gotham, and as you can see, this is kind of the main character that we've been following, um, the, the Ghostmaker, and so we'll see, uh, it's, it's kind of entertaining, he's a pretty cool ninja character, <laughs> I don't know if you guys... You know, it's kind of like the underworld of crime. Um, not too spoilery, but uh, basically somebody is killing the the people who trained Batman to become Batman. Um, and so they're kind of investigating those murders. So if that sounds interesting to you. Um, <laughs> and then uh, it, we'll go get into some Marvel and then there's some more DC too. Uh, so we got Spider-Man number two. I'm super curious about this one. If you can see, look in the corner, there's my favorite character, Miguel O'Hara, in a little head bubble. And they say, I, I haven't read this one yet, obviously. I I read them after I film my new comic book day show. Uh, so I'm super excited to see like what's going to happen in this one. And is Miguel going to show up? Even if he doesn't, they had a bunch of spider characters and... The start of this story and the artwork by Bagley, it, it was so fantastic. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to this one this week. Um, one of the, there's a, there was a bunch of cool stuff this week that I'm looking forward to. So we'll go on a little Spider-Man train here. Um, and so I got Amazing Spider-Man 13 also. Definitely super excited to see what's going on in this one. Uh, we ended, you know, no spoilers, but we ended the last issue with, uh, with Peter in trouble like usual, and uh, it's, you know, the Hobgoblin's last stand. And they're saying, too, this one uh, contains the first appearance of Norman Osborn as the Gold Goblin. And then next week, uh, issue number one for the Gold Goblin comes out. So, might have to be giving that one a try. Um, next up, we'd venture into some X-Men books. We had a Wolverine that came out, and check out that cover. That's super awesome, right, guys? We got good old Logan right there, and um, we're starting a new story arc. Percy's got a new story arc starting with with uh, with this issue, uh, so this might be a good a good point to jump on. 
Um, I hear, you know, some things go on in this one. He, not too many spoilers, but just like to give you a setup to see if you're interested. So he, he dies and then he's resurrected using the Krakoa protocols to resurrect mutants. Um, but this time when he's resurrected, he's actually savage Wolverine and, um, he's not his normal self. And he starts attacking people and stuff, I think, or something like, I mean, just that setup alone, right, guys? That sounds kind of interesting. And if you see there, he's in his savage form there. Um, and then this is another fun book right here. If you guys are fans of Legion, if you watch the Le Legion TV show, uh, super head trip like the show. Uh, but with a bunch more characters uh, involved in what's going on, um, this one... You know, it would take a whole entire review to to catch you guys up and explain what's going on in this book. But it's super fun. I always really enjoy the uh, the artwork in this one. And it's it's uh, Spurrier, so you know he's been writing comics for a long time, and and he definitely knows how to weave a tale. Um, then we have another X Men book here, and check out this super awesome. Um, Peach Momoko cover. I love this Peach Momoko cover. Super cool with uh, Psylocke here and Dakin there. And I love that suit that, that they have Dakin wearing now. It's really awesome. It's kind of like a mix between Sabretooth and, uh, and Wolverine, right? They, you can kind of see it there. Um, and just, yeah, that's just, it's just a super awesome. Wasn't a cover by, I'm reading this series. Um, there's, there's kind of a lot going on with that one too. Um, as always, you know, if you're interested or curious in seeing me review any of these books, pop a comment below. I'll, as always, I'll try to, I'll try to get a review out on that book if I, if I have time on the weekends. Um, and so here we have a uh, Venom 13, bunch, just all kinds of spider books this week. And, uh, this could be the one I'm most anticipating, like Spider-Man number two. I don't feel like Miguel's gonna show up. If he does, I would be blown away and it would rocket it to my favorite book of the week just to, on his appearance in a normal Spider title alone. Uh, but, but we do have Venom 13 here and this is actually my most anticipated issue of the week. It is the first issue of Spinning the Dark Web. And if you guys have been watching the channel, I. I'm actually collecting all the titles that this is going to be crossing over into. So X-Men, Spider-Man, Venom, uh, Amazing Spider-Man, and uh, yeah, there's going to be a couple of ancillary things I might have to pick up. Like I think there's a, a Moon Moon Girl or a Devil Dinosaur possibly tie-in and a uh, Miss Marvel. There's definitely a Miss Marvel, but you know what I'm saying? There's there's not too much extra stuff, and I kind of feel like uh, Ram V has a big say in, in this particular storyline. Super excited to see how it all plays out. Um, the fact that some of the players that are involved in the game are uh, just the, what has me even more anticipating it, right? Um, so yeah, Venom 13, and uh, yeah, so what's going on with with that is just uh again not to spoil anything on on this on this show but uh just yeah the characters involved i guess are are what really has me interested so we have ben riley who has become chasm now uh we haven't really seen too much of him and he's somehow hooked up with i believe it's madeline Pryor, which is how we get the x-men tie-in right um, and they are weaving some sort of dastardly plot, right? What that is, we don't know. Um, the set, you know, the setup guys too for, for this whole Ben Riley's kind of go turned into a bad guy ha has actually been very long. And if you look at it from the back end, it's kind of well told. Um, y you know, he, he gets coerced by the uh beyond corporation into being basically their toy their their soldier right and 
after going through a lot of work with them, getting sent out on all kinds of missions, um, he, he sort of starts to not only lose his way, but also question, you know, the Beyond Corporation's true motives in, in, in all this, right? And through that, we find that, you know, the Beyond Corporation's truly evil. Um, they're actually kind of, they're definitely controlling him. And they use, uh, you know, heavy spoilers here just for a, a minute. And then we'll, when I put up the other two books, then the spoilers are over. All right. The last two that I got. Um, and so, yeah, he, he, he um, Ben, Ben Riley, the Beyond and the Beyond Corporation, basically they, they, well, how would you say it? They, they erase his memory, right? They erase his memory. So he doesn't know who he is anymore in an attempt to continue to control him and and be able to use him as this tool this strong tool that spider-man is if you have control of him right you can send him wherever you want this however kind of backfires he escapes but he he doesn't have the memory of being peter parker anymore so now he's this different kind of a person and uh not to spoil the entire story if any of that sounds interesting to you i definitely you know, I definitely uh, say go go read it. Um, I'm pretty sure it's up right now. Like the whole entire run is is up on uh, on Marvel's Marvel's app on the Marvel app, which is like five dollars a month or something, and you could read the whole the whole story of this without having to search a lot of back issues up. But um, <laughs> so the, and this is all from the latter half of. The last Amazing Spider-Man run. If you're wondering what you need to read, if you're curious about that, um, so basically Ben Riley and like I said, I don't want to spoil the reasons why, but Ben Riley ends up uh, not not liking Peter Parker, right? And uh, and so because of that, it's kind of like the Venom way of becoming a bad guy. Because of that. Um, he you know he just he just turns into a bad guy and uh he ends up getting some more powers he kind of falls into this vat of chemicals a la joker and when he comes out he is absolutely crazy all right guys that's the end of the spoilers um if that sounds interesting yeah amazing spider-man's been pretty good in bits and pieces if you pick out the good bits you know that there's actually a really good story there so additionally and maybe all that leads up into this book here too i just thought it was a cool cover but it is a it's not a a, a ratio variant um i just think it's a super cool uh what do they call it the beyond amazing variant cover um, so of Amazing Spider-Man number 13. So that came out this week. And yeah, it's that homage to, uh, I want to say it's like Peter Parker and the Spectacular Spider-Man, an earlier issue. If not, then it's from Spider-Man Todd McFarlane run. It, it's kind of just a cool cover. Um, I, I've seen the, uh, the original a lot of times and I, I, I was like, that homage is cool. One of the things too, when I when I bought it, that I noticed, see if I can get it to show on camera, is he's actually wearing a different kind of. I guess it's the Beyond Amazing Spider-Man suit. I thought that was really cool when I saw it up close. Um, put that right there, and then there's one last book. I got one last book to show you guys that I got this week at the LCS. I did get this. It's the Jim Lee cover of the Death of Superman. 30th anniversary special and I just um, one of the things that I thought was so striking about this cover is not only do you have the the you know cover first first appearance and cover appearance here of uh, of uh, Doombreaker but I, I love I love Jim Lee's art and how Doombreaker's just taking it to Superman so so evocative of the the panels um, in the actual Death of Superman, which I read as a kid, and there's actually, if y'all give me just a second here, I think it, is it right here? 
Um, no, just one second. Yep, here it is. Which. So we have right here. It is a open. It is an open one. Uh, but all the stuff is still inside. So I still have the armband and uh, the poster and the uh, lick it stickers and all that. All that stuff. There's a couple other things in there. I can't remember off the top of my head. And I think a a big like newspaper printout of of what the the front cover of the newspaper would have looked like, uh, proclaiming that Superman was dead. And the book's in there, obviously. Uh, I just, you know, here is the the uh, the original. What started it all, right, guys? And then, uh, and then this too, kind of a little additional uh, supplementary uh, part to the set. You know, you got to have the life, the life of Superman. So Superman dies, and then life of Superman. And uh, yeah, so. Super cool. I think it was a little expensive. I was kind of contemplating because of the price I'm getting it, and they want they want a little more than I want to pay for the black bag, unfortunately. But yeah, so I I, I spurred and got this one. Probably you guys know me. I'm probably gonna get it graded and uh, read the story online and stuff um, for for a little bit less than cover price. But that it is that is awesome. Um, the Death of Superman, bringing it back. Thirtieth anniversary. If you're wondering what it is, it's the Death of Superman thirtieth anniversary special number one. Uh, I don't think there's. I didn't see that there was going to be a number two or anything. It's just a little, little special eighty pager one shot. Uh, apparently has like four or five different stories in it. Um, yeah, it's just some something fun. All right, guys, <laughs> that's what I have today. That's what I got this week for you know new comic book day uh remember if you guys watch this far into the video and you like this kind of content uh like comment and be subscribed to the channel for your chance to uh win the marvel number one book when we hit 600 subscribers all right guys we'll see you tomorrow and have a great day